All right, let's continue Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you're watching later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. Hope you've been enjoying so far. Museum should be done, huh? Hello everyone, this is Tom Nook. It's 7.32 a.m. this happy Wednesday. Today also happens to be the birthday of our dear, dear island resident, Moose. Congratulations to you. Now for today's other news, a grand museum has opened up here on Shamblonia. Did you hear about it yet? Oh yes, it's a grand museum indeed, with separate exhibit rooms for fish, bugs, fossils, even works of art. Blathers, the museum creator, says he's always available to accept donations or assess fossils. And museum admission is free, so stop by whenever you like. Also, Business is booming at the shop my staff opened. Well done, Masters Timmy and Tommy. It's a small shop, but they change stock daily and carry a selection of goods sure to better your island life. It's open from 8 till 10, so it's a bit early yet, but I do hope you'll pop in later. That's a good segue, though. When the shop isn't open, you can still take advantage of the drop-off box. Drop off anything you don't need, and our shop stewards will send payment to your account later. Ah, one other thing. To celebrate the opening of the shop, we've added a new catalog service to Nook Shopping. The catalog lets customers see a record of items they've obtained or purchased. Any mass-marketed items can be ordered directly through the catalog, so make good use of it. Now, with that all said, I hope everyone takes advantage of the new Nook's Cranny. By the way, whenever we cover big island developments like this, we'll hold a special commemorative ceremony afterward. We'd like as many folks as possible to take part, so stop by resident services if you're interested. Oh dear, never fails of course, this would happen right in the middle of a broadcast. Ah, uh, aha, one moment please. Hello, this is Tom Nook from Nook Inc, yes? What? The getaway package? Why yes, yes, of course. And that's all for today's island-wide broadcast. Ah, oh, so sorry to put you on hold. Allow me to give you the full overview of the... Okay. So now... Wait, what is that? Whether your distress is emotional or gastric, the toilet is a great place to think for a few minutes. Okay. That's neat advice, thank you. I shall keep that in mind. To celebrate the new addition to your home, please accept a small gift. You'll need convenient electronic appliances for your upgraded home. Daisy May, I'll be heading to your island every Sunday to sell my precious turnips, just the way my grandma used to. Alright, so she's gonna be here Sunday. Alright, like, yeah, house is bigger. Just... It's <laughs> still got a, a floor rice cooker. And floor toast. Basic, but it works. I guess when I'm doing laundry. There we go. A 
probably don't want that sound constantly. Okay, easy thousand. I don't think they've upgraded yet. I can't remember if they start DIY, but... Okay. Nice. That's already found. Oh, it's the birthday, right. You made it. I need to get a birthday present. Except today. Hang on, we're not done yet. Not open yet. How much time is left? Twenty minutes. Thing is, I need wrapping paper. In you go. I don't think I can just give something random. I have to wrap it. Alright, I guess we'll kill time for 20 minutes and then I'll go. Remember if I caught this. The problem is I'm just having memories of New Leaf, which is not. Like, it's not that long ago. thing is now my iron supplies are good. Now I don't have to stress about pools and running out. Oh, 
all these donations. It's gonna be half and you know what? This is gonna kill time. The donations. That's my way to kill time. If it isn't, well, the Shamblonia Museum has opened its doors, you see. It is a tremendous achievement. I confess my feathers are puffed with pride. Of course, it was your very own donations that made it possible, so to you I say thank you. Now, allow me to give you a quick overview of our fine institution's floor plan. You'll find there are entrances to the left, to the right, and into the basement. Each one leads to exhibit rooms wherein the donations collected thus far have been put on display. In addition, the far room at the top of the stairs is a gallery to display magnificent works of art. Although, as of now, it is still entirely empty. But my, but my, but by my beak, it shall one day soon swell with wonderful works. Ahem. As such, we are still waiting for art donations, so I humbly request your assistance. Oh yes, that's right, to streamline the donation process, we'll begin accepting multiple donations at once. So, if you wish to know about any fossils, fish, sea creatures, or, ugh, bugs, I suppose, just call out, tell me about this, and I'll be happy to do so. Anywho, by all means, please take a gander at our collection. Okay, first fossils. Okay, more than one, I see. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Who, who, who? These are rare fossils, each and every one, and have not appeared in our collection. I say, you have quite the knack for finding valuable fossils. Now, I do hope you will consider donating what you found. The cultural development of Shamblonia is a worthy endeavor indeed. In the meantime, I shall return this to you. But think on what I've said. The museum awaits. Okay. Here we go. Ooh, who could it be? It is an Archaeoteryx. I think that's what, how it's pronounced. I never thought I'd lay eyes upon a such well-preserved Archaeoteryx. Dear me, might I give you a short presentation on the topic? I'm quite knowledgeable, you know. Go. Wonderful, it is fascinating stuff, I assure you. Now, where to begin? Archaeoteryx's feathers led many to believe it was the progenitor of the birds. Yeah, what? Sadly, further in the, the sadly further evidence indicates it's likely not a direct ancestor, more of an evolutionary uncle, if you will. Every time a specimen is found, theories, new theories pop up, and new relatives come to roost in the family tree. And there you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? Rest assured, all donations are displayed in a timely manner. Yeah, my gratitude. Yeah, okay. Who could it be? It is a Dinoni tail. I never thought I'd lay eyes on such a well-preserved Dinoni tail. Dear me, might I give you a so short presentation on the topic? Go for it. Wonderful, it's fascinating stuff, I assure you. Now, where to begin? Ahem, yes, you may not have heard of the Dinonychus, but you may have heard of its cousin, the Velociraptor. Both were predators distinguished by their frighteningly huge toe claws. They also likely had feathers. The main difference between them, size, Dinonychus was about 7 feet tall and weighed 160 pounds. Little Velociraptor on the other wing was a compact 2 feet tall and only weighed about 33 pounds. I've heard that people meeting celebrities are often surprised at how short they are in person. And that is what I have to say about that. Anywho, I will gladly accept your gen generous donation. 
I only hope we can find what remains of this fossil and display it in its fully assembled form. Ooh, could it be? It is an Archelon tail. I never thought I'd lay eyes. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Alright. Let it lay it on me. Ah yes, Archelon. It was a sort of huge sea turtle. The largest thus far found, if you want to know. They were very sizable, some 13 feet long, with a shell size of a small car, if you're not into that sort of thing. They likely ate seaweed, shrimp, octopus, and possibly ammonites, given the era involved. It seems certain that giant turtles had to be the prima donnas and eat some of the oldest life forms on Earth. And that is what I have to say about that. Anywho. Yeah. Mammoth torso. Oh, could it be? It is. A mammoth torso. I never thought I'd lay eyes on such a well-preserved mammoth torso. Alright, let's hear the presentation. Ah, mammoths, the bad boys and girls of the ancient mammal world. They are, of course, famous for their size, which could be up to 13 tons for the largest males. But they were subject to no one's rules, and some species were smaller than modern elephants. Scientists have pondered for years. Were mammoths the coolest of all extinct species? Perhaps so. And that is what that is what I have to say about that. Okay. Oh, wow, already a duplicate. Okay, what's... Good old Diplodocus, what would we do without you? The stout fellow embodied all the best in dinosaurs. Those sturdy legs, the magnificent tail, and above all, that extraordinary neck. Do you know that the center of its gravity was such that sitting upon its hind legs was probably easy? What's more, paired with its long neck, this ability greatly increased its reach for eating plants. Best of all, Diplodocus was probably... <laughs> probably grew its entire life having no adult size. Would that we were also gifted. And that, yeah, we've heard that one before. But I read it again. Fiddling. Why, this is a biddling. I might interest you in a few fascinating facts. Go for it. Biddlings hide their eggs inside large bivalves, like clams, where the young can stay safe until grown. The biddling isn't being sneaky, no. Their young help keep the bivalve healthy by eating invading parasites. It's a wonderful bit of evolutionary deal-making, don't you think? Each one keeping the other safe? Though, eating parasites does not sound like a happy childhood. Is that why the fish is so bitter? And there you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? Squeed. Yep. First off, squids are members of the mollusks family, just like the octopus. Many mollusks, like snails and clams, have shells, but the squid's body is almost completely soft. The exception is a long, narrow bit of hard material going through its main body, the last remnant of its shell. Of course, having your in having your shell inside is not best practice. Perhaps they lost the owner's manual. 
Cucumber. The sea cucumber, much like its relatives, the sea urchin and sea star, has no heart nor brain. However, unlike its relative, it has no shell nor spikes with which to protect itself either. So how does a softy such as this stay safe in the ocean, you say? Brace yourself, I say. When threatened, sea cucumbers jettison their innards out of their backsides. Ugh, gross but true. The sticky, stringy stuff ensnares predators, allowing the cuke to make its escape and grow its insides back. One might say the cucumber is a gutsy creature indeed. <laughs> Do forgive me. Fascinating stuff. Uh, knife jaw. The barred knife jaw, also known as the striped beak fish, is a lovely fish with a distinctive striped pattern. It is reportedly also a very curious fish in that it has been known to approach swimmers to greet them. They also tend to be good at avoiding fish hooks, so well done on outwitting this one. And there you have it. The ore fish. Now it might interest you in a few facts about it, yep. The oarfish is a long, eel-like fish that can supposedly reach up to 36 feet in length. They appear in various legends as things like messengers of the gods. It seems to me like a creature. It seems to me a creature like that could explain the myth of a massive ship-crushing sea serpent. It is, of course, well documented that people tend to exaggerate the size of the one that got away. The anchovy. Go for it. There are over... There are more than 140 species of anchovy, but they do all have some things in common. They are all small and feed by simply swimming with their mouths open to filter food particles from the sea. In my sleepier moments, I wish I could do that. And there you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? See, I can learn about the stuff that I already donated. That we didn't get to do. So, for example, this one. What a splendid horse mackerel. Supposedly, the horse mackerel derives its name from a false myth about its strength as a swimmer. The gist of it is that these fish are so powerful underwater that smaller fish can ride them as steeds. It's absurd, of course. Where could, where would these alleged fish jockeys attach a saddle, much less horseshoes? One does wish that people would construct their legends with a bit more scientific plausibility. Okay. Matthew, tiger beetle. Do be careful and do not release it from its cage. I shut at the very thought. The tiger beetle is extremely fleet off foot, though it runs in a rather peculiar way. That is, it sprints, stops, and sprints again. Oh, I think we heard this. Okay. May have heard the sea butterfly. Such mystery, such grace. Did you know that the sea butterfly's scientific name is the Cosmata? Yeah. Shell body. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've heard this. Alright, just making sure. It's just the, in the initial few donations. Go 
I mean, I'm gonna have a lot of travel miles. It's gonna take three whole trips. Ladybug, what a wretched thing. Last time I obliged to ask, would you like to learn more about the specimen? Go for it. Ladybugs are quite beloved thanks to their tiny round shape and adorable spots. To that I say bah! The fact of the matter is some have stripes instead of spots and some have no markings at all. No, I shall never understand why it is said that when a ladybug lands on you, you'll have good luck. I shall only have a fainting spell. <laughs> and though bugs are the bane of my existence, rest assured, the wretched thing will get the best of care here. This is a turban shell. Go for it. The turban shell is a sea snail with a rather nifty trick up its sleeve. Uh, shell. You see, this snail carries a hard, round, button-like operculum wherever it goes. What is an operculum, you ask? Why, it's a trapdoor of sorts. When danger approaches, the snail slips into its shell and pulls this trapdoor closed over the opening. Thus, it is locked safe and sound inside, and bravo, I say, bravo. When, troubles come, when trouble comes knocking, just do what the turban shell does. Shut the door and turn out the lights. And there you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? Rest assured, donations are displayed in a timely manner. A whelk. This must be a whelk. It might interest you. Go for it. Whelks are sea snails that migrate from deep water to shallow water when the weather changes. Of avid carnivores, they feed on worms, crustaceans, and mollusks. In fact, these wily snails have been known to use their own shells to pry open the shells of their victims. They then use a rough a rough tongue-like organ with thousands of tiny teeth to lick their victims' shells clean. Yeah, you might want to put that image out of your mind when it's your turn to dine. Branchu goldfish. The Ranchu goldfish is a charming relative of the goldfish with a bumpy head and a stout round body. They have ordinary heads when born, but develop impressive rectangular heads after about three years. Supposedly their head shape changes depending on factors like the size of their tank. So, Ranchu goldfish enthusiasts aim to raise perfectly shaped specimens and work hard to achieve this. Of course, no one asks the Ranchu goldfish themselves what shape they want their heads to be. <laughs> All right. Tadpole. Go for it. Undoubtedly, you know that tadpoles eventually turn into frogs. I must say I find them impossibly adorable with their squiggly little tails. 
but even cuter when they sprout legs. Why? We can witness accelerated evolution in these squirmy little ones. Who? it makes me so emotional. And there you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? Rest assured, all donations are displayed in a timely manner. You have my gratitude. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, Hermantus, what a wretched thing. At last, I'm obliged to ask, would you like to learn more about the specimen? Eh, uh, I see. In that case, ahem. <laughs> Don't let the mantis's angelic pose fool you, for it is truly monstrous. The mantis is known for its large size and tremendous strength, and for sickle-like arms that pack a punch. And though they tend to eat bugs and spiders, mantises have also been known to dine on small animals too. And those eerie eyes, oh my, did you know it has five of them, two big ones and three small? I shall faint to think on it further. Anywho, it's my sincerest thanks for the donation. Mole crickets. Be warned, there is nowhere one might hide from the mole cricket. This plump pest has powerful front claws made for digging holes. And oh, how it loves to burrow underground. A cousin to the grasshopper, it also has wings and can easily take to the air. And I swear this on my pin feathers, some have even been seen walking on water. Oh mercy, I may need a moment. This is making me feel rather wheezy. A sea slug. Imagine, if you will, a land slug, but one dressed in a frilly attire, full of bold colors, stripes, and spots. That is the sea slug, a gastropod that looks ready to walk on the red carpet, or perform beneath a big top. But these clowns are no laughing matter, eh what? They're garish colors and wild par patterns, wild predators. Warn predators to steer clear of their stinging, toxic taste. And that is how you dress for success, as they say. The dab. The dab is a flatfish that bears some resemblance to the olive flounder, though their mouths are different. Personally, I am morbidly fascinated by each fish's eye placement. The dab's eyes are both on the right, on its right side, while the olive flounders are on the left. These fish spend lots of time lying on their sides in the sand, so the odd eye placement does make some sense. But it's how, can I put this, creepy? Viscerally disturbing, profoundly upsetting to fans of symmetry? We have, yeah, yeah, okay. I just wanted to learn about it. I'm reading all of them this time. <laughs> hey, hey, no, thanks for the raid. Hungry as usual. Well, I'm sure you know what to do. How is the stream? Wait, I'm already full? Okay, well. Mostly, like, mostly making bases in Starfield, but it's tedious. Oh, okay. Hey, keep donating. Have a snail. Okay. What's the fact? Snails are not insects, I'll admit, but they're just as revolting to me. Snails are mollusks, you see, and are born wearing shells they cannot remove. Instead, their shells get bigger and bigger as they grow. Who? They must get heavy, don't you know? I suppose that's why they need a trail of mucus to move about. A truly foul form of transportation. 
Anywho, my sincerest thanks for your donation. Alright. You need a base to do crafting? Really? That does sound tedious. Oh, I hadn't donated an olive flounder, apparently. Go for it. Tell me the fact. Did you know that the olive flounder is the same shape as other fish when it hatches? But as it grows, it gets both wider and flatter and can reach some three feet long. These flatfish spend much of their lives buried under some sandy ocean floor waiting for prey to happen by. Imagine the surprise for said prey when they strike. It would be as if your kitchen floor were trying to bite you. And there you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? Okay. Uh... Oh, I got two Crucian Cops here. Hmm. So the stuff you're describing about, like, what you had to do to grind experience to craft, it sounds like very similar stuff you had to do in Skyrim to abuse leveling. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, like, that game, it's using the same engine. Just pretty much the same exploits are going to be in it, and bugs... I don't know. Alright, tell me about the Red Snapper. I wish I could contribute more to the conversation, but I don't really know much about Starfield. Other than it's it's a game and it's a Bethesda game. There are so many types of fish that are both a shade of red and have a tendency to snap. With no other names, what about Burgundy Biter? Garn Garne Grip Grasper? Poos? Pincher? And there you have it. Fascinating stuff. Okay. I guess I should sell these ones in here. I wonder, do you know how to tell the difference between a Crucian Carp and a standard issue Carp? What? It's quite easy to tell the two apart. One must simply locate the barbels, or rather, lack of them. Just what is a barbel, you ask? Well, a barbel looks like a little mustache. Looks a little like something like a mustache. The run of the mill Carp will sport this unsightly facial hair, while the Crucian Carp is considerably better grooms. I tried to grow a mustache when I was younger. It never did fill in quite right. All for the best in the end, as mustaches go so much better with noses than beaks. Okay. The chub. The pale chub is a river fish with simple black and silver coloring. Interestingly, the male's coloring becomes most vibrant when he's trying to attract a mate. Though normally plain, these fellows really know how to look stylish when they want to. Perhaps I could learn a thing or two from the pale chub. There you have it. Alright. No. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna be I'll be alright, Ayana. Well, I imagine you're getting food. Enjoy. I've actually spent like half an hour half an hour reading this stuff. At least the store's open now.
Oh, I was worried when I heard you were all moving to a deserted island, but this is much nicer than I imagined. It's so nice, so nice. Even though we haven't been here all that long. In a short time, Blathers has moved in and we were able to open up the shop. Experiencing new things every day has been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I'm so pleased to hear that. Actually, I came here today to check in on you all and see if you need any assistance with anything. It's our way of celebrating your new shop, you know, we sisters like to help wherever we can. Any idea, any island ideas come to mind? You're too kind, Mabel, we're just overwhelmed that you even thought to come visit us. Hey, hey. I think... Something come to mind? Well, we still have some logistical challenges to overcome. We depend on mail order goods for a lot of our goods. Having this shop should make it a bit easier for us to obtain ready-made furniture and stuff like that, but we still need a clothing supplier. Aha! Uh -huh. Something tells me that today is your lucky day. As it turns out, it's really not that difficult for us to get to this island. How about if I stop by every so often to sell some of our wares to your wonderful island dwellers? Oh wow, do you really mean that? Our residents would be so overjoyed. Overjoyed. Of course, silly. If we can sell our goods here, it's a win-win situation for everyone. I suppose with that settled, I should head home and work out the details with my sister. Yes, please, do that. We can't wait to see you here again. <laughs> it's okay, I'm, dis I'm in disguise. I wasn't recognized. I oh, will. Sorry to keep you waiting. Waiting. Thanks to your help, we've opened this amazing new shop. New shop. Our, ho our shop is named in honor of our beloved President Nook. Wait, our shop, our beloved President Nook, you're wrong. Welcome to Nook's Cranny. As you can see, we're offering ready-made furniture and items that can't be made as DIY projects. Also in the back cabinet with the tools and other miscellaneous goods, we have wallpaper and flooring. We have to fulfill your shopping needs. Needs. Um. Okay. We'll buy it. We'll make this the present. Oh. Don't, but I wanted to buy more. Oh, ah. Okay, time to send the recipes from test your DOI skills to your phone. And we're done. I hope you enjoy DIY even more now with your new recipes. New recipes. Anything else look interesting? Wrapping paper. Just one. Why have I never made a pitfall seed in this? Okay, I mean, there's, there's stuff here. I don't think I want any of it. Comes with three new services. First, let's talk turnips. I've heard the turnip market is about to take off here on the island. You'll probably see a turnip seller soon. We'll buy any turnips you have on hand. The price is set in the morning and afternoon, so be sure to stop by. One note, we don't accept turnips on Sunday. That's the day the turnip seller vis visits the island. The second service involves a hot item of the day. The hot item will change every day, so... If you bring one in to sell, we'll give you double its normal price. You can check the hot item of the day on the sign in front of the shop or by asking us directly. And last new service we're offering is the drop-off box. You can find it in front of the shop. Say you're in a hurry or the shop is closed, you can just drop off any items you want to sell. Easy, right? We'll pay you later by sending the funds directly to your account. And I should mention a few things. 
There is a handling fee, and we don't accept turnips, and hot items will just sell for their regular price. And I think that wraps it up. Sorry about that. That explanation went on for a bit. How can I help? Okay. I can sell all the other stuff. I mean, the duplicate was a little bit of a bummer, but I guess I got my money back. Okay, I'm nearly through these donations. Start with this one. Yeah, uh, stink bug, what a wretched thing. Alas, I'm obliged to ask, would you like to learn more about the specimen? Yes. Ah, uh, I see. In that case, ahem. <laughs> I dare say the name says it all. Stink bugs are known for their stench. Phew, phew. As it happens, these crop-eating pests use straw-like mouths to pierce plants and drink the juices. And when threatened, they use a smelly chemical in their belly to release their odious odor. Who, how do they live with themselves? Anywho, it's my sincerest thanks for your donation, and though bugs are the bane of my existence, rest assured, the wretched thing will get the best of care here. Okay. Tell me about the starfish. Sea star. <laughs> it's not a fish. Uh, wonderful, I would love nothing more. The sea star may appear to have five feet, but those are, in fact, its arms. And though five-armed sea stars are the most common, there are species with 20 or even 40 arms out there. Ah, but the fascinating appendage facts don't end there. You see, upon each sea star's arm sprout many dozens tiny feet. They use suction cup feet to not just move around, but to, uh, grab hold of dinner guests as well. Finally, it should be noted that when a sea star loses an arm, it can grow it back. More impressively yet, a severed sea star arm can sometimes grow an entire sea star body back. There you have it. Fascinating stuff, no? The anemone. Medusa herself would be most impressed by the sea anemone. This pretty predator loves to wave its colorful flowing locks about, but those gorgeous tresses are in fact deadly tentacles surrounding a hungry mouth. Triggered by the slightest touch, these tentacles harpoon victims with neurotoxin. The sea anemone pulls them, then pulls the helpless, hapless prey into its mouth for a spot of lunch. I say, let this be a lesson. Never ever make an enemy out of an anemone. They have it. <laughs> Go on more. The barnacle. An acorn barnacle. Now, I might I interest you in a few fascinating facts about your barnacle? Okay. Do not mistake the acorn barnacle for a relative of the clam. Tut tut, mollusks, they are not. Barnacles are cousins to crabs and lobsters, you see, though the family resemblance is hard to spot. Acorn barnacles may also seem to live a stationary life, what with being attached to rocks and such. But truth be told, baby barnacles are avid travelers, drifting shellless about the sea before settling down. Once they find a good rock to affix themselves to, they float free no more, which begs the question, do adult acorn barnacles ever look across the open sea and long for youthful adventure once more. And there you have it. Fascinating stuff. Alright. 
That's it. Everything is donated. It's like a pile of 20 different things. Okay, no, I thought I heard a balloon. I'm surprised I didn't get more miles for that. Okay. Give a gift. Hey, Rocket gave me a present earlier, all because today is my special day. I'm going to use my brain muscles and guess that maybe you have something for me too. I do. Go. Yes! I can open it now, right? Well, that's totally a moss ball. <laughs> no doubt about it, you and I have similar tastes, Shorty. I'll gladly accept your generosity. That's a classy way of saying thanks for the gift, bud. Yeah, that, that one's kind of a hard one to get. I don't think I ever got all of them. It's Moose's Rockstar Day. Come on, it's time to get wild, Vroom. Oh, I know, let's all cheer real loud whenever Moose smiles. I mean, I like the commitment to the Power Range a bit. <laughs> I have to take a photo anyway. I may as well make it, like, just easier to make a thumbnail later. <laughs> go, go around to the happy birthday sign. Sahara's in town as well, so I need to buy stuff from Sahara. Okay, first of all, do this. Easy points. She left the birthday party to go do stretching. I'm completely out of sync. Okay. This doesn't quite... <laughs> Map 100%. I mean, I'm sure it's better with motion controls, I get it. There we go, in sync. I spin it around, but it just doesn't register it right away. Hey! 
stretch. It's a good thing it doesn't grade you. Good news is I'll have plenty of points to go do a trip. Ah, the money tree's not ready yet. I don't think I have that. Hang on. A paper kite butterfly. Tell if that's big enough. Ah, oh, there's a present. Okay. We gotta hurry. Take the bait. so impatient. <laughs> Just wanted it to hurry up. Hey, is a Twitch chat, yeah. Great indeed. How's it going? Wait, oh, slingshot. Uh, is this safe? Okay, it's safe. Oh, yes, look at how pretty I look. Wario loves to dress up. <laughs> I'll save these for presents later. I should make an effort of bringing the new villager in. I just, I've been picky this time around. Hey, come here. Turn. Keeps turning. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move. I need to be more patient. Oh okay. Of course it's just a carp.
Wait, why'd I go? I keep going to assess fossil, like, force of habit. Okay. Yeah, paper cut, butterfly, what a wretched thing. Alas, I'm obliged to ask, would you like to learn more about the specimen? Yes. Ah, oh, I see. In that case, ahem. With its black and white striped wing pattern, the paper kite butterfly is both elegant and pretty. Pretty poisonous, I mean. Who oh dear, where was I? Her, yes. Even this butterfly's black and white striped larva and little gall and pupae are toxic to predators. Indeed, the paper kite butterfly's foul flavor is famous, and thus birds in particular steer clear of the fiends. This bird most of all. Many hoot, my sincerest thanks for all your donation. And though bugs are the bane of my existence, rest assured the wretched thing will get the best of care here. No, we're good. The majority of the time here has just been donations and reading them. This is my problem with catching bugs, I just run. I needed that. Oh, there's a fossil over there. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, the fossil on high ground. I'm gonna be even more disappointed if Sahara is somehow on high ground. I'm not even sure how that would be possible, but let's just see. I swear I saw Sahara, where? Okay, the good news as well is... I need to chop down a tree. So I'm just gonna do that. I know that's not a fruit tree. And it gives one more stump. as well collect the shells while I'm at it. Ooh. I did a DIY and got the stuff wrong, so I made this on accident. Man, I tell ya. I'm all accidents today. It's real easy. My head was stuck in my shirt, and I still did the DIY. If you make it, scream, I made it. Cardboard boxes. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Is 
there's plenty of time for fishing later. Right now, I'm doing stuff that'll give me uh, nook miles. Wait, so where is Sahara? Oh, there you are. Hello, you are calling me Sahara, for it is the name I have carried for as long as I have carried these rugs. I bring these rugs from my home, which is far, to help you decorate your home, which is near. I have small rugs, large rugs, and rugs of the medium space between. The design is seen after the buying. I have also mysterious flooring and wallpaper. Oh, how surprising you will find it. Are you ready to buy? Mysterious flooring. 3,000 bells. Yes. Now, please, I will accept the money payment. Yes, thank you. You will want more after this, yes? Using one will make you excited for another, and so on. Is your wallet content, or shall uh, you make additional purchases? Wallpaper. Okay. Surely you will, your eyes will grow with a, like a mouth of yawning, a yawning beluga whale. Your heart will race when you see it. Yes, rug time. Large rug. Ah, my favorite size. I'll accept the money payment. Please enjoy the rug as long as you can. I have exchange tickets as bonus for the good soul you are. If you save up to five tickets, you can trade for mysterious wallpaper or mysterious flooring. You bought a large rug, so that's three tickets. I hope you'll buy again, may the tickets tempt you. Uh, I do want more, but hold on. Oh, come on. <laughs> yes! That's actually great. I can, I can dress like a clown properly now. Yes, I want to get changed, because that's what you do at a refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> oh, I pressed the wrong button. Ooh, we can do we can do something nice with this. I can get another one. <laughs> of course. Paint no. Ancient flooring. It's it's interesting, but I'll stick. I'll stick to this. This is fine. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, put in storage, put in storage, put in storage. I have an idea. I guess I should assess this other fossil. Wonderful, it's fascinating stuff. Ahem. Yes, the Spinosaurus was a very large carnivorous dinosaur, roughly the size of a T-Rex. Unlike its famous cousin, however, Spinosaurus seems to have spent a great deal of time in water. Similar to modern crocodiles, this creature lived on a diet of fish and land-dwelling animals. Personally, I am simply relieved that it did not seek flying prey. And that is what I have to say about that. Anywho, I will gladly accept your generous donation. I should check the, uh, the item of the day. I want to sell! Okay. All of this. And then I need to keep buying stuff from them until they upgrade. Good. <laughs> Change the look. Alright, well that's an easy one. Sad that it didn't happen earlier. Reminds me of, um, the bear I had in my other file. That was lore. probably use it later, but for now. Where's Sahara? drug. Yeah, I want multiple of them. Give me one more. All 
Uh, give me the mysterious. The wallpaper. I think three should be enough. I'll look at what the small and the other one are. Small rug. Ah, uh, these exchanges. Give me... Okay. Mysterious flooring. Medium rug. Right, for now, I'm good. I just want to see what these rugs are and if I can do something with them visually. If I can, I'll buy more, otherwise, I'll just put them in the collection. This might work. I might be able to do something with this. Okay, hold on. Yep. Okay, now... Hold on, give me a sec. This is simple room decoration. But you know, without the... <laughs> without the ability to, uh... To be able to just put as many of these as I want. Oh, but see, that doesn't work. Because it doesn't hug the edges like the other one. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Because I, what I was going to do with that was just... Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't sit flush. Okay. I mean, I think as a minimum, this this is probably like a okay thing. I wish I had less of a seam. I'm just thinking. Hmm. It's not so seamless. Alright. For now, let's just leave it like that. What about this? <laughs> it does it. Oh, wow. These two kind of fit together. Hmm. 
I actually don't mind that. It's a little more interesting. It just looks too rough. All right, that's fine. Wait, what did I earn? Oh, collecting items. Okay, this is purely just to get the miles. But I'm putting the Jester hat back on. No! <laughs> that line. A refrigerator, should I get changed? Oh yeah, I have new... Hold on. What do I have for DIY? I got some new ones. I can make this more of a house. A stereo. Hmm. I don't have a table. An outdoor swing. No, for now, I'll leave it. Last one of them is the, uh, the bonus item for today. Wooden block toy. I don't think I have the recipe for that. Well, that's more or less the morning stuff, with the exception of just going around and uh, collecting fruit. I'm still debating whether or not I should try and sync up the fruit with the rest of the island. Yeah, how much? Just, yeah, it's nice to have even a little extra space, which brings us to. The cost of your remodel, that'll be 198,000 bells. Ah yes, make your payments using the ABD. Use fountain firework? What would I use that for? I think I need to do this myself. To ensure the five day thing. I don't care about hair. We don't have the high ticket stuff yet, so... Okay. Do it. Going. 
I will try to commit to a villager today. I just as long as there's one that piques my interest. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's go. The thing is, that I have only a small number of ones that I would want, but I don't know all of them. I don't know all the villagers, so it could just be a case of I come across one, I'm like, oh, I want that one. No sister fruit on this one. Who is it? It is an elephant or a hippo. No, it's a it's a cow. It's a blue cow. Stu. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Stu. I'm visiting this island today. And you're Will. From Shamblonia. That's really cool. This island's real neat, huh? Let's have some fun together. Mer you know what? I kind of don't mind that. Don't mind this villager. I like I like the colors. There's only big fish here. What's going on? What is going on here? It could be that it's just garbage. about it. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like how Stu looks visually with the colors. I'm probably going to take Stu. It's a nice blue color. Drop it.
Alright, I've decided. This island has so much nature, every place you look is nature, it's real neat. I could stay here forever pointing at stuff saying, that's nature! Man, it'd be real nice to live on an island like this, full time I mean. Just living life, pointing at nature. Wanna come to mine? Huh? Your island is... Shamblonia, right? Wait, that sounds familiar. Oh, I called about moving there. The island I want to live on is the island you live on. That's some real weird bait. Real weird. Well, now I gotta move ASAP. I can't wait to hang out with you on Shamblonia. Just the colors. <laughs> Very vibrant and... I like the colors of, of this villager. Alright, cool. First village is done. I was expecting uh, something other than that. It's okay. my shovel doesn't break. Had it for a while. Alright, well seeing as though I decide on the villager, I'm probably not going to use another ticket today. I might buy one if it's uh, a whole uh, spend knock miles thing, but other than that... Oh nice. Oh damn, I thought it was going to be just iron. I mean, okay, it practically was. It's fine. Okay, uh, net ready. Okay, cool. <laughs> no wasp nest. What did I got? Newton's Cradle? I'm not sure what that is. This tree yet. I mean, rock near the tree. Gold! Again. Alright, not a bad island. Well, there we go. I committed to a new villager. 
Ready, go home. Yep, let's get out of here. I guess I need to figure out where this house is going. One sec. Ah. Okay. There was a big shadow. I had to check it out. Uh, is there anything to donate? Cop, cop. No. Okay. Yes. I mean, I'm just going to save my miles. <laughs> I'll buy a ticket if it is going to give me some in exchange. But I got a new villager for today, so that's good. Okay, uh, I forget what you need to do. I think you need to talk to... Yeah, there it is. Yes, of course. Don't worry about a thing. We can set up your gateway getaway pack package to include a lovely furnished home. Mm hmm. Oh, not at all. We'll set up your move in date at a later time. No, no, no trouble at all. I just need to drop the proper contracts. Understood. We will get back to you soon. Yes, thank you. Well, sorry to keep you waiting. I. I suppose you ever heard that call I just got. For some time now, I've been advertising the Shamblonia getaway package. And wouldn't you know, out of the blue we have three interested parties. It's great. Yes, it's quite wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Uh, wonderful except for one minor detail. None of our applicants are too fond of the notion of sleeping in tents, you see. I'm afraid I got caught up in the excitement of persuading them to move here, and I may have promised them fully furnished... Homes. Three homes setting aside the land, pre preparing all the finishing. is It's just too much for one raccoon. I should probably go look for other villagers then. But, Will, here you are in my hour of need. It certainly must be fate. Would you be able to help me get these homes prepared? Three of them. Of course, I need to give you a good and proper thank you for your assistance. <laughs> As if I have a choice. Of course. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll never forget this. Uh, oh, you're going to need some top secret instructions. When you're ready, come talk to me with the phrase, what should I do? Agent Knockout. Oh, this is fun. Okay, well in that case, I'm going to have to go island hopping and make sure I get villages that I want. This changes the plan a little. It's not like I can be too picky, but the first one was good. Okay. Wait, so what is this Newton's Cradle? Oh, it's one of these things.
for some reason I couldn't remember that that's what they're called. Okay. I should probably make another shovel because this one might be on its way out. I don't remember what's required for a shovel. <laughs> that should be enough, hopefully. Okay, it's hardwood. Ooh, oh, I'm almost out of hardwood. Worth extra money. Not that I can make many of them. Not that button. Of course. <laughs> okay. Should probably look at chopping down the trees that are in the way of houses. I forgot to put the stuff away. Okay. I guess I'll try my luck with the islands again. Uh, I mean, I'm probably gonna chop this tree down as well because it's kind of in the way. gonna get wood on the uh the island I visit. See who we got. Don't 
Ow, oh, it's a duck. And this spiral map as well. Who are you? Molly, wow, I thought I'd be the only one on this tour. I'm Molly, you will. Did you really come all the way here from Shamblonia? I think I flew past Shamblonia once. It looked pretty from the air. It's nice of you to say. Debating it. <laughs> Thinking. I'm trying to be picky with it and not go for the first one I see. If I was to pick a duck, I'd pick a scoot, but... Hmm. That's the thing, if I... There's always gonna be a case of if I don't pick this duck, someone's gonna be like... Why didn't you pick the duck? Oh, this is just gonna work. I don't need to do any fancy stuff. I don't think I would have to pick three villages so quickly. <laughs> How many miles do I have left? I can do... four potentially today, so it's like... I suppose I should see. Weed milestone. What is it? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Four off. Oh no, I might be off. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That'll probably get me another ticket. <laughs> I think I'm one off. 
There we go. No? Wait, huh? Wait, is it cell? It might be cell. It might be cell. I think I have these flowers back home, so I'm going to take some. One of each. waiting for it. <laughs> I, mean, I think I have to let it get me once just to learn the recipe for medicine, but I'm not going to let that happen. Okay, well, now that that's done... May as well. Island. I was rereading my old notes on how to become a pop star and found this fab recipe. It's too good to keep to myself, so I threw it in a bottle to share. You have to have to make it, Tammy. Hey, <laughs> did I just get a Korok mask? I got a Korok mask. Yeah, ha ha. Another rice cooker. So I can double the amount of floor rice that I make. Probably gonna break.
Alright, cool. Done here. I'm gonna decide not to go with this villager. I want Scoot as a duck, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt for Scoot. I wanna try and make the animals varied if possible. So two ducks, not sure. see. I need a spot to plant these temporarily. I'll put them here. It's kind of isolated on its own. That's the layout I'm supposed to take. Uh, and I'll put resources away. the amount of floor ice. How does it look? Ooh. <laughs> In the other file I did, I kept getting the soup and started a soup kitchen. I think now I'm gonna... Start a, a rice house. I can't remember if I donated a wasp. I probably have. We'll go see. This right, I'm gonna be able to get five tickets. Uh, yeah. was probably one of the first ones I donated. So, in the interest of reading all these... Dare I say, ew, that's a wasp. Do be careful and do not release it from its cage. I shudder at the very thought. Allow me to share a fact with you. Wasps are sometimes called meat bees. Oh, right, the meat bee. Because they eat meat. Yes, I remember this. It's not a it's not a bee made out of meat, it's a bee that eats meat.
All right, well, there's another ticket paid for. Should probably make another axe. The one I have will most likely break. Just making sure that wasn't a balloon. I swear I heard one. Can't remember what's involved. Double check like what's required. I'm pretty sure it's just placing the houses, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. What should I do now? So you're ready to prepare. Here's what I'm thinking. We should start by building a bridge across a river somewhere. With three homes to build, I worry we'll run out of a space that's easily accessible. A bridge will open things up a bit and make things easier to get housing plots during construction. So that's why I'd like you to start by crafting the parts for this bridge. Get your DIY skills ready. And then you'll want to decide on the prime location for the bridge too. Right, bridge. And done, I sent you a recipe for a bridge construction kit. You can find it on your Nook phone. Once you've assembled your new... Once you've assembled your bridge kit, find a good spot and then check in with me. It can be a little tricky to place a bridge, but we can talk if you have trouble or need advice. Good luck. Alright, well I know where I'm gonna put it. It makes the most sense to put it over here. Excluding the stuff that's going to be in the way. Hang on. I need to think about this. Hey, Mochi, how's it going? So I guess... Ugh, is that gonna work? I can always fix it later. I just have to chip away at the land, I guess. Doing great. Good to hear. I'm doing alright. I'm just kicking back after work. Build the bridge. DIY recipe to assemble the kit. Right, 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 right. Okay. I keep thinking like you just place it. What do I need? Log stakes, clay, stone. Log stakes. Oh, okay. How many? Four. So it's twelve. No. Yeah. Twelve pieces of wood. Okay, I think I got that. Oh, 
One sec. Wood, clay, and was it stone? Come on. Accidentally press B. <laughs> I have this habit of pressing B because I think the text will go quicker. Okay. Now for the kids. There we go. Oh, thank you for that follow as well. Appreciate it a lot. So what part of the world are you watching from, Mochi? Just out of interest, if you don't mind me asking. I think I need to make some tea. I need a little pick-me-up. Ah, I mean... I want this to be a path, but... It's just a question of how this is going to look here. I guess let's see. Oh, it can only go on an angle. Hmm. Well, the only option is here. Wait. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to imagine this. <laughs> oh, I just meant like, uh, yeah, like where in the world are you from, that's all. Wait, can I do stamps yet? Okay, I can. Well, let's just... This is gonna look ugly. But I, I need... I need a frame of reference. Oh no, this is gonna take a while. Alright, well. Bear with me. I pick the same pattern again. <laughs> I guess... I guess I'm going to have to... look at what I'm going to use as a path. Sooner rather than later. Or I could just erase it, but... You're from the Middle East. Oh, okay, cool. I have uh, a few friends and co-workers that are from there as well.
Well, now I know that. I mean, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. Like, I could make a, a path that leads up to it, and then I could have a garden or something on the side. Alright, I think I can commit to this. Okay, so it doesn't look horrible. I know what I'm going to do very, very quickly. I'm going to be as rough as I can be. Uh, hold on. Oh, that's... Hold on. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, as rough as rough can be. This is what I was looking for last time. It doesn't matter. Okay. Sure. <laughs> DIY dirt. I'll look for something better. This is just so uh, at least it doesn't look horrible. I'll replace it with something better eventually. one here. No, that one's too close to the top one. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's basic, but... I mean, it could it could look worse. Red corner. Oh, it's the boxing ring thing. Okay. Well, this is just so I can imagine it. I'll do for now. Now, let me see. Imagine it. No. It's a little off. Uh, here. Yeah. Really? No, 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 no. Why is it being difficult? <laughs> oh my god. I think that's probably the best I can do now. I think I need to move it up one. It's actually not bad. This is two tiles wide. I think I, I think it's fine. Oh, 
I'm sure I'll change it later. Alright, I can get rid of this. I just needed to know. Ooh. Come here. Citrus long horn beetle. That's nice. Okay, well... I mean, I guess this is gonna be in the way, so let me... Oh, it's already done. Alright. I just need to eat something. Wake up, lovers. Citrus Longhorn Beetle. What a wretched thing. Alas, I'm obliged to ask. Would you like to learn more about this specimen? Yes. Ah, I see. In that case, uh -huh. The Citrus Longhorn Beetle is a putrid pest and a grave threat to trees. <laughs> it's true. Adults possess powerful jaws and use them to chomp through hard wood and plant fibers with ease. The little larvae do... Oh, I know better. Bo <laughs> I know better boring like bullet holes into innocent trees with gusto. Citrus trees especially. Voracious and vile indeed. Yes. I suppose I should go on another trip. I did find a good spot. Splendid, excellent work, thank you. Then tomorrow we'll have a new bridge and it'll be even easier to get around the island. Now that that's out of the way, time to start on new homes. We can wait for the bridge construction or you can ask me what should we do. Okay, hold on. What should we do? The bridge won't be ready tomorrow, but you want to start on the homes now? Please take three housing kits. Each housing it comes with a list required, so read those lists. Okay. I think that's all for me. Thanks for all your help. Alright, well, I'm not going to place these down. <laughs> okay. Yeah.
Okay, okay. I'll probably try to throw this into storage in the meantime. Right? No, damn it. I have to hold it on me now. Uh, I'm gonna put the umbrella into storage and the watering can. Just to give me more space. And I guess, yeah, let's settle on two other villages, hopefully. Did not think I would have to do that today, but that's okay. <laughs> it doesn't look good. It's okay. Placeholder. I want to fly. I don't... the eyes. I couldn't tell they... <laughs> I couldn't tell they were open. It's okay. Still got four more tickets to use. regret not picking the duck. Dun 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 dun. I was gonna eat the fruit, but then I realized it's probably gonna break this.
go. Please don't break. I'm surprised the shovel hasn't broken. Alright, well, the other ones are on high ground. Oh wait, there's one more over there. I'll see who it is. Just say hi, but I'll commit to it. Aurora. I wasn't expecting to meet anyone on this tour. Hi, I'm Aurora. You're Will from Shambloni, aren't you? I'm glad you stopped and talked to me. One thing I love about traveling is the chance to make new friends. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Just got a big teddy bear. Dealt with. Okay, cool. Now it's safe to use this. I guess the villagers can't move in until I place these kits, so I got nothing to worry about. Hey Sandy, nice hat, thanks. Just trying to keep things varied. Made a spare. Registered it. I had a stone axe there before. Thank you. 
Okay, pretty much done on this island now. I didn't see a recipe wash up on shore, but I feel like I would have done it by now if it were to turn up. Okay. We'll try again. Oh, all right, Let's try again. I mean, I wonder what, what would to happen if I was to just hang on to the kits but not place them. I suppose they'd just be in limbo, not able to move in. Okay. Consume. I mean... of it needs to be darker. This is a placeholder for now. I'll do something better later. I mean, that looks brighter, I guess. I don't know. It look... I'll make something better. This was just planning in advance on my part. Just trying to plan things out. Okay, well, it's gonna path is probably going to end here, and then I'll we'll go up. I'm thinking about it. Alright. So you have to go do, do stuff for your dog, huh? Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun. The whole teeth thing. What is this? How much room does this thing need? Alright, it doesn't matter. I'll put it away. I tried.
Whoops. There we go. I don't think I need to force it. I think I can just hang on to the kits, and as long as I don't use them or complete them, it's not going to put random villagers there. the best. I think they're just too big. They just eat up a lot of space. Oh wait, no, no, no. I forgot to get the ticket. I forgot to get the ticket. No. Back. No, nothing. I forgot to get the ticket. I do like how even the characters in game call it a yawn fest and it kind of acknowledges that no one ever reads that stuff. If you had to read every single terms of service pop up that popped up, you just you don't have enough time in the day to do that. Sheesh, what? Sheesh, what? That I don't like the teddy bears? I forgot to do this as well. Do the museum. Why not? Oh, forgetting to get the ticket. Well, I've kind of had a long day, but also it's 10 o'clock at night now. I'm also dressed like a clown, so it should be excusable. A few words from Bladders will be running. I keep, I should be reading. The Bladders of the Law is yours. Residents of Shamblonia, once again, I am Blathers, your humble museum curator. I am overwhelmed, indeed overjoyed, by the marvellous establishment we are opening today. This could not have been done without you and your considerable cooperation. I only hope this island's rich ecosystem and treasure trove of species continues to inspire all. It was truly strengthened... It has truly strengthened my resolve to build a museum bringing with wonder. I say, I do hope you'll continue your support of the museum's efforts going forward. Thank you for that rousing speech, Bladders. Now let's have a few words from someone whose contributions made the museum possible. That's right, it's Shamblonia's own will. <laughs> Appropriate. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you for your heartfelt and encouragement, encouraging sentiments there, Will. Everyone, please get ready to join me in bringing the ceremony to a close. Also, those wishing to take a memory photo should press the screenshot button. 
with hope for our continued growth and celebrate Shambolonia's beautiful museum. Hooray! Thank you all. This concludes our ceremony. Please do take care on your way home. That mouse still looks so skeptical. Oh, I got, <laughs> I got hooked back outside. I wasn't done yet. Ceremony. Alright. Now then, welcome to our dedication ceremony honoring Shamblonia's brand new Nook's Cranny. Thank you. Shamblonia truly started out as a deserted island. There simply wasn't much here. But now, it's slowly beginning to develop thanks to the tireless efforts of, well, everyone really. I'd like to ask Simi and Tommy to say a few words as representatives of the new Nook's Cranny. Timmy, Tommy, if you would please. Thank you, Shamblonia. Because of you, we've opened a proper shop. My brother and I will work hard to make it the best shop, and I hope we can counter your business. Yes, yes. Thank you both. Next, a few words from someone who made many valuable contributions towards seeing Nook's Cranny spilt. Yes, yes, Shamblonia's very own will. The floor is yours, Will. Anything to add? Every time. Yes, yes indeed. Thank you for those heart well heartfelt and encouraging sentiments though. Everyone please get ready to join me in bringing a ceremony to the close. Also those wishing to blah 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 blah. Yeah yeah. If you're dyslexic, it's crook's nanny. Thank you all. This concludes our ceremony. Please do take care on your way home. Let's see who we got. Again, I'm in no rush to get the villagers. But I should probably settle on the next three ones soon. here if anyone it's the hamster I haven't seen you before who are you flurry hello there my name's flurry your will oh you came here all the way from Shamblonia 
You're definitely more well-traveled than me. I'm trying to fix that by touring places like this island. Mom always said there's magic and chance and kind so I'm glad we ran into each other like this. <laughs> I'm sure it's someone's favorite. I'm going to be very picky this time around. wrong thing. I was supposed to put the shovel away before pressing A. Eventually I will stop picking up these weeds once I've gotten the miles for it. Speaking of miles... What do I need to do? Catch fish. Or die for sea creatures. Catch a mantis. Grow fruit tree. Yeah, okay. That's why it hasn't progressed. I haven't been fishing. I can get the mantis. It's right here. Done. More bugs. Safely. Just gotta get the furniture. Alright, there we go. What is that? It is... A towel rack.
Is this gonna be a sea bass? I'll have flounder. No, that works. That was one of the goals. Good. Pretty much done with the island. Once I get back, I'll do the critter stuff. There's not a whole lot of incentive to remain on the island. Oh, I gotta do the stone. slower. May as well. Still counts. on here. Ready to go home? 
better from further away. I think this time I'm not going to do dirt piles, I'm going to do like actual tiles or whatever. Or brick, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I mean, I guess I got a towel rack. Oh, come on. That is not practical. That is not a... That's way too high. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I feel like I should be lower. I've never seen a towel rack like that. Sure. Yeah, that's better. One more ticket. I want to try and settle on the villages, but it's just it's hard. Okay. 
I'm hoping my patience pays off and I get one that I want. No special island today. Is that? It's Alice! Yes! <laughs> GG. I wanted Alice. Nice. This was one of the villages I wanted. I thought I'd be the only one on this tour. I'm Alice. You're well. Did you really come here all the way from Chamblonia? I think I flew past Champlonia once. It looked pretty from the air. Okay, well, there you go. There's the Australian fulfillment. Prerequisite fulfilled. It must be true what they say about how travel broadens your horizons. This change of scenery is giving me a new perspective on life back on my island. I like it well enough, but move to my island. Move to Champlonia? That's an interesting idea. You know, I think I might have gotten in touch with your island about moving there a while ago, governor. One of the odds that I'd run into someone from Chamblonia here. Anyway, your support means a lot. I think I'll start packing to move as soon as I get back from this store. Okay, if I can find Scoot, I think I've done well. But awesome. Patience paid off. No. Dude, please. So that just leaves one more spot for this batch of three. I'm not sure I'm gonna find the other villager today, but I mean picking two, that's, that's decent. Ooh. 
the Alice find is a big deal. That's probably the only villager that I was like, I have to have Alice from the previous island. Probably the best Australian themed villager. At least from what I've seen, I don't know. The kangaroos look a little weird. And her house is pretty nice looking. Ready. Okay, now it's safe. Uh, I need to check the other trees for adventure's sake. Assuming uh, might be on high ground. Hey, go, Hemi, what's up? Mm, it's on high ground. No, okay, good. Sewing project. Alright, I'm pretty happy with this. I found a villager I wanted. The other one I got earlier was pretty decent as well. Progress is going good. I think next time I'll start laying out the foundation of the town. How's the game? It's alright. Just slowly progressing. I'm pacing myself this time compared to the first time I played this during COVID. good. It's something that, uh, yeah. It's just extremely, extremely nice to have during the pandemic. Oh, it's facing this way.
Okay. Why does it do that? It doesn't remember that I've registered an axe there. It keeps removing it. That's everything. Okay. Hooray. The pandemic was rough, you're telling me. I mean, everywhere in Australia got it pretty rough, but Melbourne had it extra rough. <laughs> Five, six lockdowns. And so this was nice. Help pass the time. Okay. I'm in no rush, so. I should be happy with the two villages I've managed to get. As long as I hang on to their housing kits, that shouldn't matter. hearing about Melbourne on the news. Yeah, because we had it pretty hardline. I mean, the whole daily update thing was something they did. Just on a state-to-state -state basis, anyway. Good progress. What is a sewing project? Oh, it's just arts and crafts stuff. Okay. Alright. I think that's a good enough session for today. Plus, I didn't find all three villages that I wanted, or wanted to grab. Two out of three ain't bad. But I'll get, I'll get one of the others next time. I'm just gonna be patient and look for the one I want, or one that's just sticks out, and I'm like, yeah, that'd be a good villager to have. But yeah, no rush this time. Not that there was the first time around, it's just I had extra time <laughs> all right uh well yeah that's it for today with animal crossing hope you enjoyed if you're watching later on youtube uh yeah if you want to support the content over here the easiest way to do so is just by clicking any of those buttons that tell the youtube algorithm hey algorithm <laughs> algorithm algorithm hey this was great i messed up the sentence it's okay uh, but yeah, thank you to those that do click the like button and all that stuff. It does help out quite a bit, so yeah, appreciate you if you do that for me. And uh, I'm sure by now two of, the, of my videos have popped up if you want to watch me play something else in the meantime. But yeah, till next time, bye YouTube.